Okay, so what are our, our options here? Well, we need to have these functions that are functions of time converted into functions of tau, that are dummy variable. And one of these functions will have to be flipped with respect to tau, and then we have a, we add a delay, a time delay t. Now, which one is easier to flip? We could do either, but from simplicity, we could take that square wave and flip that one. It doesn't matter which one we do. They will both give the same result, but from what we can see here, the first one would be, the, uh, the second one, excuse me, would be the easier one to flip. So what we are calculating is the integral then of x of uh, tau times h of t minus tau, d tau from negative infinity to infinity. So notice that uh, this expression is not an expression of t minus tau instead of t. The first one is easy. We can simply replace t with tau. The job is done. Now the second one, we need to prepare that equation, uh, that, uh, uh, that expression in the form of h of t minus tau. So the first part is to simply flip this equation or this graph. So this would be tau and h of tau. Would be to flip this, this expression around the tau axis and we would have something like this, where we are still at, at zero, but now we are at negative one there. If you now add the value of t to it, as we see in there, we shift the entire function by a amount of t. So if that's t, this here is t minus one. Why t minus one? Because the width of that is one, All right? So are there any questions up to this point as how we converted the function x, uh, h of t into the function h of t minus tau? No? Yeah? Okay. Um, why isn't t minus one all the way back there on the purple line? On the purple one, uh, which one's purple? Uh... Uh, for the t minus one, I'm just trying to wrap my head around it. Yeah. Yeah. So if we just flip the the uh, the graph, that's what we get. Are we okay with this? Yeah, so now if we add t to the entire function, the whole thing shifts. So uh, okay. zero becomes t. Right, okay. And the back here becomes t minus one. So this width is still one. This width is still one. It's a time shift, right? We are not stretching or multi. If we are multiplying, that would increase the width. Okay. Thank you. So that's then the expression we have, let me erase all this. And what do we do next? Well, uh, actually let me move to the whiteboard. What we'll do next? So here we have the expressions, we, the, the graphs we derived. So this is the t, t minus one that we just flipped, that is h of t. And this is the other expression, the, the other graph. Now, when you take the integral, that integral has a value of t inside that is unspecified, which means that if you're now looking at the entire tau axis, that value of t needs to translate, needs to cover the entire tau axis from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. So now I have to take this value of tau and make it move along, excuse me, the value of t and make that move along the tau axis. And then look at our overlaps between these two functions that we are taking the convolution off. And by covering now the entire tau axis, we look at different portions that have different overlaps 
and then you perform the integration there. So one thing to note here is this triangle. So you have two parts of this triangle. Uh, this one here is a ramp that it starts from zero and goes to one at time one. So we can say that for this part, h of tau or x of tau is simply equal to tau. And this is only valid between zero and one, right? When tau is one, h of tau is one. When tau is 0 0.5, h of tau is 0 0.5. Past one, that relation has changed. And that curve here between one and two is a bit different. This is still a linear curve, but you can say now that X of tau is two minus tau. Let's verify that. When tau equals to one, the value of the function is one. So two minus one equals to one that holds. And when tau is two, the function is at zero. Tau of two equals to two minus two, that's zero. So now we have all the expressions we need to integrate. We have the expression from zero to one for this curve and from one to two for that. I only know that a pass two, it's zero. Lower than one, that is zero, it's also zero. What is next? Well, now we need to perform that integration, a famous integration, which is the integral from negative infinity to infinity of x of tau h of t minus tau, d tau. Now t here is unspecified. So t needs to now translate, cover the entire um, tau axis. So let's just start with t going to negative or, or uh, less than zero. If t is less than zero, then this block will be up here, and when t is less than zero, we are multiplying zero with zero, or with a function of tau. So provided that a t is smaller than zero, the overlap there is a function times zero, and the result of this integration, let's call this y of t, is zero. So this is for t is smaller than zero. I notice that for t is smaller than zero. Doesn't matter how, where this function is because the other one is always zero. So when you multiply them, we get zero. Now let's, now that I covered the entire negative axis, we can start to translate t and move that towards the positive axis. So that's what we see here. T has entered the positive value, so we are no longer in this region here. And because you are no longer there, what can we see? Well, we see clearly that there is an overlap there of two non-zero functions. And that overlap will exist provided that a T is smaller than one. Provided that a T is smaller than one. Why are we stopping at one? Because when you pass one, there's another overlap starting here. We need to account for that separately. So for this first part, if T is greater than zero, but is smaller than one, here is the overlap. This is one, right? Here is the overlap. And what is that overlap? Well, we can do the convolution there by taking the integral that is only valid for the overlap. The overlap exists from zero to t, right? But a t can only go as high as one. So the overlap exists from zero to t. X of tau is this function, which turns out to be tau. H of t minus tau is the red curve, which in this interval is worth one d tau. And this integral gives t squared over two. All right, tau, integral of tau is tau squared over two, replace that t squared over two. 
are we good with the first integration? Sorry, could you just repeat why the limits of integration are zero to t instead of zero to one? Yeah, so I just wanted to point out that I am already out of uh, like five minutes more than uh, where I wanted to be, but I'll continue and uh, so we have this in the record. And so if you have any other classes, any other commitments, feel free to leave. I will continue this and then post the solution. Uh, yes, so are, do we agree that this interval exists between zero and one, this overlap between zero and one, right? So long as t is between zero and one, there exists an overlap there, but that overlap only exists between zero and t, right? There is no, there, there is no overlap past t because it's zero. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Right? So the inter even though we are considering this interval, we need to stop at t, but t may go up to one, right? Up to one. Okay, yeah, I see now. Yeah, so now let's do this. Now, when you pass one, which is the second graph here, we pass one and we are now between which values? So long as t, we see two overlaps, right? We see one overlap here, and you see another overlap there. So these are two distinct ones. And this overlap will exist so long as t is between one and two. So long as t is between one and two, these two overlaps will exist. Yeah. So what is the integral there? Is this first one here, which is integral from, what is this, this limit, this first overlap? The first overlap exists between t minus one and one. So t minus one and one of, the two functions, which is tau times one, d tau, plus the second overlap here, the second overlap that now exists between one and t, one and t. Now we are taking the overlap between is still x of t, which is one, but now this function has changed and this function is two minus tau times one d tau. First overlap, second overlap. First overlap exists between t minus one and one. Second overlap exists between one and two. And this can occur so long as t is between one and two. Okay. Now we can move on. If we pass two, uh, and this, is re this result here is, if you do the integration, this is basic math. And I guess give the result here, t three t minus three squared plus three and a half. Okay. Now we have a very last point here where we passed number two. And if you pass number two, see, we are only left with one overlap. This, this is the only overlap. This is number three, this is the third region. And this overlap will exist provided that a T is greater than two, because that's where we stopped here, but it's also smaller than, than three. Why three? Because when t is three, this will be up here, and this t minus one will be two, will be precisely on top of this point, which is where the overlap ends, right? So if t is three, this point is there, one, uh, three minus one is two, they will be right on top of this, and then past that point is all zero, right? So this last overlap exists provided that it is between two and three. And you can now take the integral there. 
and tell me the limits of the integral. The overlap exists between t minus one and two. And which functions are we integrating? This one, two minus tau, this one, one, d tau. And this is one half of uh, t minus three squared here. Yeah. And then past the three, when t is greater than three, this point here is two. So it's going to be to the left of number two here. And there is this portion that's zero. Then for that point on x of t, y of t is zero. 